Ron Paul is still threatening to win next Tuesday's Iowa caucuses, still within striking distance, much to the ire of the Republican Party establishment. Good thing for them, then, is that Ron Paul is not a particularly difficult figure to discredit. By now, America is well aware of his political kryptonite, the infamous newsletters bearing his name and littered with extraordinarily offensive language. Congressman Paul reportedly modified his earlier wasn't me excuse earlier today, telling a radio talk show caller that he didn't write all of the newsletters, only the parts dealing with economics. True or not, that actually brings up an important point. The Ron Paul newsletters weren't all about homophobia and peddling racist conspiracy theories. It's actually devoted largely to the singular Ron Paul economic ideology, seeking converts to the Church of the Gold Standard, the only form of currency spelled out specifically in the Constitution. Here's the congressman spelling that out to Iowans yesterday. It's explicit on monetary policy. It gives no authority for the Federal Reserve. It says only gold and silver can be legal tender. And, uh, and this, this would be very helpful. It prevents the financial bubbles. Prevents financial bubbles? That's the ideology. Not having a gold back money gives the Federal Reserve too much power. They can print fiat currency. That leads to inflation, so says Paul and his acolytes. And inflation is just a benign way to say theft. This unwavering belief in gold is not held solely by Ron Paul. It is broadly popular in conservative circles. It's one of those beliefs that, like so many in conservative politics, also happens to be a useful business opportunity. There are a whole lot of people, like Glenn Beck, who want to sell you gold. Specific kind of gold the government can't confiscate, and one his advertisers, Goldline, the gold retailer who just happened to sell that special kind of gold, and whose executives now face 19 counts of theft and fraud in California. What's happened in the last few economically uncertain years is that people have used a ton of their money to buy gold, and that has led a lot of other people to make a ton of money peddling gold, in some cases to the sort of folks who might enjoy a Ron Paul newsletter or a little time with Glenn Beck. G. Gordon Liddy, I'm looking at you. But even as Ron Paul was saying yesterday that gold-backed currency would prevent financial bubbles, there's a good case to be made that gold itself has experienced quite a bubble these last few years of global turmoil, and that bubble may be about to burst. Knowing the price of gold has dropped considerably since the summer, David Frum wrote this this morning, gold trades as a way to make a statement. It's simply not a sensible way to invest. A great many Americans are paying a steep price and may pay a much steeper price yet for allowing hucksters and ideologues to sway their economic judgment. Gold has a kind of totemic allure for certain kind of conservatives. It's something real, something the government can't get its filthy mitts on. But now that the price of gold is at a three-month low and dropping still, what does the bursting of the gold bubble tell us about where this economy is headed? Joining us now is Ezra Klein, the Washington Post Wonk blog. He's also a columnist for Bloomberg View and an NBC political analyst, frequently seen here, right here in this building. As I'm Martin Bashir, guest hosting this morning at three o'clock. Indeed. Thank you for doing some double duty this evening. I'm glad to be here. Um, what do you think the allure of gold is? I, I have to admit, this is like a little. I, I find the universe of gold bugism fascinating, <laughs> um, and I find the kind of like gold industrial complex that that it powers much of the conservative media really fascinating. Because if you turn on Fox News or you listen to uh, right wing talk radio, it's shocking, shocking to me how many of the advertisers are selling gold. Let's say that what you really wanted to do with your money was you want to take half of it and put it under your bed. Right. You want to take the other half and buy canned goods and ammunition. But if you said that to your wife, she would think that's a dumb way to invest. <laughs> the thing you do in that or case your husband, is buy gold, you know. or your husband, either way. But, but that really is what a lot of the gold buying is about. Not for everybody. I mean, there are real speculators in gold, folks who are very sophisticated about the gold markets, try to make a lot of money off of it. But a lot of the people being scared into buying into gold, what they're being scared into doing is investing based on a very, very certain type of fear. And that type of fear has sort of nothing to do with the economic case for why one might want to own gold. It is, it is disconnected. It's completely different. In what way? I mean, the idea being that when after after we hit a Cormac McCarthy like road situation, <laughs> a bleak post-apocalyptic future in which we have all of our possessions in a, uh, a a repurposed grocery cart that we push through a wilderness of cannibals and right. and marauders that we have gold with us. Well, there's this theory that gold is somehow intrinsically valuable. That there's something about gold that, unlike fiat-backed currency, unlike the greenbacks that the Federal Reserve simply prints, that it, it matters. It means something, and you sort of interrogate that and you think, well, what, what does it mean? Can I eat my gold? Well, no, that's
That's not good for you at all. Can I build a house out of gold? You need a whole lot. Can I use it for ammunition? Maybe a little. Gold does not have an incredible, uh, uh, does not have incredible intrinsic value. And then the other piece of it is that gold has testable, there's a testable theory behind uh, Ron Paul's argument on gold. What Ron Paul believed, and it is in his book and the Fed, if you've read it, what Ron Paul believed we were about to undergo in 2006 was a big currency crisis. He thought the dollar was going to crash. And he actually prints a testimony he did back and forth with Ben Bernanke on this exact topic to show how prescient he was. But we did not have a currency crisis. The dollar is stronger than ever. Uh, treasury bonds are stronger than ever. So the thing that the gold bugs thought would happen, the thing they thought gold would prevent from happening, did not happen. Right. And what's fascinating is that the, the, the sort of gold bug, the sort of gold fetishization is a, is a, a kind of hardcore version of what is a more, of a, a more broadly popular conservative vision of monetary policy, right? Which is that you want hard, hard money, you want to restrain how much the Federal Reserve can print, and you even have members of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors warning constantly over the last 18 months of impending inflation. Uh, not quite a currency crisis, but making warnings similar to what Ron Paul is saying, we're going to have inflation, we're going to have inflation, we're going to have inflation, and it has not materialized. No, it is not. Although, I mean, I think we do need to separate those two. You got people on the Federal Reserve Board saying inflation might, might go to 3 or 4%. That's different than sort of the Ron Paul, we're going to have hyperinflation, we're going to have a, a, serious, a serious currency crisis. And, and they, they do deserve to be separated. One thing that's, I think, important to note is there's this other strain of conservative theory uh, represented best by Milton Friedman, which is that you should have the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, in fact, the key element of policy because that is how you get economic management away from Congress, away from this sort of interest group dominated, public choice ridden uh, right. government. And that was for a very long time the key conservative argument. If you re remember the uh, debate on the economy a couple months ago, when asked about who he would like in the Federal Reserve, Mitt Romney actually said Milton Friedman. Right. And I wondered, does he have any idea what Milton Friedman would be doing right now? Yeah, and what's fascinating is that I think the, the Ron Paul base of the Republican Party has defeated the Milton Friedman base. I think we are actually seeing more a sort of hard moneyism take over the Republican Party. We will discuss that some <laughs> other time. MSNBC political analyst Ezra Klein, also the Washington Post and Bloomberg View. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Just ahead.